I saw this black mass dart in the, there was a reflection of it. When I stopped about right here, looked up. Oh, it's definitely a flooding of memories. And I happened to catch it. I didn't see legs. All I saw was just from the head down, it was the silhouette. Did they conjure something evil, demonic and natured? And there was some strange symbols in the center of that pentagram. The red beating eyes that have stuck in my head since the day it happened. I can never get those out of my mind. And that's, at that point, I went in there and I told them, I was like, I'm, I'm out, I'm going, we gotta go. We have to leave now. My paranormal experience. My name is Scotty Dabbs, and this is my paranormal story. It all started, this was the first experience I've ever had with anything paranormal. I was about 16, 15, 16 years old. It was in the small town of La Forest, Texas. I mean, it's small, small town. You could walk from this end of the town to this end of the town in a matter of three minutes. You know what I mean? It's just real quiet, quiet town. No cars passing, you know, wouldn't even hear the humdrums of engines or anything. And um, it's just kind of an eerie, eerie place to begin with. You know, every street in the town was dirt, practically except their main road. I had a good selection of friends that I stayed with down there. Pretty much a good few years of my life was with these certain groups of friends. And we were, we had spent some time getting really into that show on a &E, Ghost Hunters, with, um, you know, I'm sure people who are gonna be viewing this know who the Ghost Hunters are. Uh, and we had one of our friends who had swore up and down that his house was haunted. And we all kind of were like, oh no, you're pulling our leg, you're joking with us, there's, there's no way, not, not in this little town of maybe 300 people. Was, no, it really is, it really is. We can go check it out. You know, it's right down the street. Let's go check it out. This guy, his his parents were at work out of town in a different town, and his little brother was staying with one of his friends in a different town. So there was no one there. It's the only house in the forest that had a second story. Couldn't miss it. And we go in there. We're all just kind of hanging out, you know, just talking amongst each other, just doing what teenagers do, you know, laughing, joking. We ended up going into a, a bedroom and we had shut all the lights off. And at first we started simple with some questions, you know, like, is there anyone in this house with us? We would get no response, nothing would happen. We'd ask him again, he'd get no response, nothing would happen. And we had one of us and eventually it's like, all right, we'll make you a deal. To make this a little easier for you to understand if there's any spirits in this house, we want you to knock once for yes, twice for no. We waited for a few minutes and then that same, that same guy asked the question, are there any spirits in this house? And we were all laying on what I would assume would be a king-sized mattress. It's been a long time, I can't remember exactly how big the mattress was, but it fit the five of us on there. After a while, I remember one of us saying, asking how many spirits are in this room. And we got one soft knock. Two to three minutes passed by, we got another knock. And then just increasingly, point by, you know, second by second, these locks got faster and faster and louder and louder. And they wouldn't stop until one of us yelled out, stop. And as soon as he said, stop, Silence. Dead silence. My paranormal experience. To me, they felt like they were coming from underneath of the bed Knock, you know how box springs are made out of like the little wooden planks? 
To me, it felt like those knocks were hitting on those wooden planks. We're pretty creeped out at this point. You know, all of us are kind of like, is, did this, is this real? Like, is one of us messing with one of us? Or, you know, we went through our heads, we asked all the questions, hey, is anyone doing that? Who, who's knocking on the bed frame? The two at the end of the bed who would have the advantage to do so were like, man, if we haven't moved, and you'd be able to feel it. If someone moved, you would know. You'd hear it because it was dead quiet. You'd feel the bed move. No one moved. I'm pretty sure one of the people we were with was uh, one of the guy's girlfriends. She wanted to turn the lights on, but she kind of got out vetoed on that. And then a few minutes after silence, another one of us says, hey man, did somebody throw anything at me? And everyone was like, no, we didn't, we didn't move. And he, he goes, no, something hit me in the leg. I felt something hit me in the leg. Now we're gonna go back a little bit. And um, when you first walked into this, this bedroom was kind of barren. You could tell it was for a single father. Um, there was just a bed, a dresser here with a TV on it and a dresser over here in the corner of the room that had a lone cowboy hat sitting on top of it. And that's the layout of the room. When we got in there, you know, that cowboy hat sitting on the dresser. After all the knocks had happened and then after my buddy had said something had hit me in the leg, he got up and flipped that light on and that cowboy hat was sitting on the floor all the way, all the way on the other side of the room from where that dresser was that it was sitting on top of. And man, that, that really got this group going. We were scared at this point. I, I can guarantee you that was everybody's first time experiencing anything like that. And you know, generally when teenagers are messing around with somebody, eventually they crack and they laugh. Not a single one of us cracked, not a single one of us laughed. We were all terrified. My paranormal experience. So we were just walking down here earlier to kind of go visit uh, Fred Blackwell's grave because you know we you know he's the one that passed away in the house mm -hmm. and uh, Scotty kind of noticed something a little strange on the grave on the on the tombstone. What did you see, dude? Well, as we were as you're walking up to it, it's it's just like a normal little headstone. Right. Now it's got their their name big up there. Who died? Dates the whole nine yards. But if you look down in the bottom right hand corner of it, there was an upside down star, which is, you know, to my knowledge, any kind of upside down star is a pentagram. You know, it begs the question, 14 years ago, when Scotty, myself, and several others witnessed these events, did Fred or Fred and his wife, did they intentionally conjure something evil, something uh, demonic in nature, or was Fred himself a Satanist? And it all kind of makes sense now, you know? And we told the spirits in the house before we left, we were like, hey, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna leave, we're gonna take a breather, we're gonna drive around the forest for about five minutes. When we come back, we want the cowboy hat off the foot of this bed back up on top of the dresser. And the second time we go in there, we're, we're treading carefully. After what we've just been through, you know, of course, we're like, man, is anything moved? Is anything out of place? Nothing was moved, nothing was out of place till we get to that bedroom. Um, again, I'm going to remind you that there was absolutely nobody in that house. No one could have gotten in that house except for me and my group of friends. When we go back into that bedroom, the cowboy hat that we had left sitting on the foot of the bed was back on top of that dresser where it originally was when we first walked into the building. I 
I stepped out of, everybody else went in the room, tried to figure out some way to do it. I stepped out of the room. I'm honestly, I'm in tears in the hallway. And he had family pictures in his hallway. And I'm kind of sitting there, you know, and I'm just kind of replaying everything that went, went on just now in my head. Everything's just a million miles an hour. So I've been given special permission by the current owners that live in the house to come and let Scotty tell his story in a more detailed way. So it'll give you a better idea of knowing exactly where the experiences happened and where everything took place. And at the time, the bed was on this side of the wall. They had a dresser about this size, sitting over there with the TV on top of it, and then a dresser where the shoe rack is now. Um, and then over there on that corner, that hat came from there, landed about in this vicinity. I can't really feel the space spiritual part of it anymore because obviously there's so much light and goodness in this house now but I think it's more so the flooding of memories you know what I'm saying uh, oh it's definitely flooding of memories and then right here just I mean faster than that I saw this black mass dart in the it was a reflection of it when I stopped about right here looked up and I happened to catch it. I didn't see legs. All I saw was just from the head down, it was the silhouette. And as it got lower, it kind of got more and more transparent. And just the red beating eyes that have stuck in my head since the day it happened. I can never get those out of my out of my mind. And that's at that point I went in there and I told them, I was like, I'm I'm out, I'm going, we gotta go, we have to leave now. You know, I, I didn't live on the fours either. I lived in Pampa, Texas. That was my hometown. That's the town about 20 minutes from the fours. Whenever I went back, I remember I was really into skateboarding then. That's what I did every day. That's how I, I knew these group of friends. We were skateboarding buddies. We all skated together every day. And uh, every day after that night for about three months, man, I would wake up about 11 o'clock noon I'd go out I'd hit I'd hit the streets find some street spots to skate at go to the skate park I wouldn't come home till sundown but it didn't feel right every time I'd walk home I'd always be constantly checking over my shoulder constantly stopping at the alleyways looking down making sure there was nothing there I always just felt like something was following me and I, I believe that whatever it was that I saw in that house followed me. But this went on for about three months and so I finally told my mom, I was like, Mom, listen, I know you're really into this stuff. Like, I think something's following me. And I can't tell you what it is because I don't know what it is. But I'm uneasy. Every time the sun goes down, my just entire world, it seems, is just dark and uneasy. I need to do something about this. She was like, well, I don't know what you want me to do. And this was right around the time smartphones were starting to get real big and become little mini computers in your pocket. I did a little bit of internet research and I learned that, you know, generally when stuff like this happens, the best thing to do is to go get a rosary and have it blessed by a priest. So I told my mom that I wanted a rosary and I wanted it to be blessed by a priest. A couple weeks later, she came back and she, you know, got me that rosary. And I started carrying it around with me. And for the first week or so, a little bit of it lifted off, but there'd still be certain alleyways that I'd have to stop and look at just to make sure that whatever I thought was after me wasn't gonna be down there to get me. And then after a while, it just completely, you know, completely stopped. 
I am so glad that I brought Scotty back here. 14 years later. Because this was an experience that terrified him so badly that every time he would come into Lee Fors and he would even dry, drive anywhere near the house, he would get nervous, paranoid. And by us coming here and revisiting our past and facing that fear, I really feel like he has come to closure with this chapter in his past and he can close that and move on. And I mean, that's, that's basically it for my first paranormal story. Still baffles me to this day. I don't, I can't tell you what happened. I can't tell you what it was that I saw up there, but it definitely changed, changed my life. It gave me something to be passionate about. <laughs>